Gigi Lame. Yes. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? You look very colorful. I look very colorful today, oh. right? Yeah, no, it's it's exuding how I'm feeling. I'm feeling very colorful, very happy. So yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Listen, mm. you're a vet graduate. What did you study? So I actually did uh, a BA general in media and anthropology. I mm. will say that I think anthropology was my favorite. Um, and people often ask what anthropology is, and it's basically the study of human behavior. So from your state courtrooms, um, to crime scenes, to how the Wari people in the Amazon coexist uh, with wow. um, you know, other indigenous people and the oh. environment, that's kind of you know, what I studied. Oh. So, <laughs> have really you ever, weird fusion, I know. Have you ever thought of rapping on anthropology? I don't know how it would sound. <laughs> I, I honestly do believe that um, hip hop, which is what I do, is mm. is uh, very anthropologically driven. Wow. You know, um, because hey, that's big English, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anthropologists. <laughs> Because, um, you know, when you look at America and, you know, um, the U.S. being, you know, the foundation of hip hop, how we've localized it as uh, young people uh, in this country to what is now Mapiano, I think there definitely is um, a journey that hip hop has gone on. And, uh, you know, our behavior, you know, we get the flossing type, then we get the woke Kendrick Lamar type, huh. then we get the Nicki Minaj's <laughs> with the boom boom bass, and then you get the Gigi Lemains who kind, of, who kind of, you know, shift between Coca and you know going to a private school so I do think that there's a lot of stories in the people uh, within hip-hop um, our community um, our economy and how we've moved throughout the years okay so who is Gigi Lame? Mm. Gigi is uh, a Joba girl I like to say a city girl a Joba girl um, born and bred in Johannesburg oh. I've lived in a few spaces from Soweto to Lanasia to Brakpan to Yeovil um, because I've got family in all those different spaces but I was in boarding school for a little bit I went to Dominican Convent School uh, which is actually down the road okay. <laughs> amazing school amazing people moved to Vinay College and then of course went to Vits. Uh I just I think I, I'm a young uh, Cassie preacher for you know the girl who comes out of the hood who um, wasn't as fortunate as you know some of her peers at, I mean going to a convent school you get to meet so many different uh, you know children from different walks of you know uh, life mm. and then you know going into a space where you're kind of um, competing based on merits so I think that's something I really pride myself on that you know a lot of the things I've attained are you know based on merit and just really working hard because I know that my fates and you know the fates of some of the people I grew up with um, have definitely been different different roads altogether even okay. though we grew up together they say money talks is money talking to you I love money. Money talks. Of course money talks. I love money. Like oh. money is my first love. Money makes, helps me take my mom on vacation. Uh, money helps me uh, with a lot of things. Helps me buy data. Oh. <laughs> money helps me record a song. Um, yeah, like I, I, I do think a lot of people kind of um, romanticize the fact that you know like money isn't e everything and for me I think that's a huge facade money makes a lot of money makes the world go around mm. yeah so during COVID mm. money stopped talking to a lot of people <laughs> including me <laughs> <laughs> including me absolutely what happened during COVID I think the, the one sector that was hit the hardest was definitely um, entertainers, the entertainment space. Uh, I remember like leaving my place um, it, where I live uh, and going you know, to live with the parents and quarantine with the parents. And it was quite evident that the world had stopped because now you're not able to perform, um, you're not able to go out and do anything. Like you're sitting at home and your best bet is try to, trying to make money digitally. And that has always been like a new space for us as, um, you know, you know, Africans, I think we're only going through our technological boom now. So 2019, I think, caught a lot of creatives flat-footed. Um, we, we didn't get much support from anything. And I think within the art sector, it's even more tricky. Um, and just believing that, you know, that is an actual career and not just a hobby or passing phase. So, I mean, yeah, it was difficult. It, mm. was, it was really, it was really, really difficult for me. Mm. Um, but I think with having my parents around and, and family, um, 
at some point, I won't lie, I thought it was the Armageddon. I thought the world was going to end, definitely. <laughs> but just, you know, knowing that it was going to end with my parents being there um, was something else. But the recovery, I think, was what was crazy for me. Like, if we get past this, how are you going to even start? Mm. Mm. So how are you surviving? I'm surely you must have had living mm. expenses. You, um, I don't know if you've got debt, but yeah. um, how are you um, dealing with that? So I'm so proud to say I don't even have a credit card. Like, mm. I remember my <laughs> grade six teacher was like, and it's crazy because years later, that's something I always remembered, where she was like, you know, um, of course, there's also building credits. I get that, but I try to stay away from the accounts and that kind of thing. So mm. I didn't have to deal with um, things that were not a necessity, mm. you know, like an account somewhere where I had to pay off some things. Um, but it was definitely around saving. I'm not going to lie. I'm a huge saver. I have this obsession with, like, if I get paid for something, I will take a small percentage and put it somewhere and completely forget about it. And I think I had about three or four of those pockets, not a lot of money, but three or four of those pockets, that, like just very normal things like savings, you know, that you get with your accounts and whatnot. And I just throw it into there and forget about it. And I think out of those pockets, I probably only went into two. But it was also because we were living in a household and we were all kind of like sharing expenses, my mother, uh, my father and myself. So I think that also is what made it easier. But I do have a huge obsession with saving, no matter how small, like it could be 150 rand to, you know, whatever it is. I try to take a percentage of performances or whatever it is um, to go towards something. How long will it take you to survive financially? <laughs> Well, that was where I kind of had to take a, a leap of faith um, in understanding that music is also business. You know, it's not like something that will always be consistent. I think with artists, there's a clear like blow up phase and then there's like, you know, things stay constant and then it's either you uh, elevate or it's either you, you know, kind of go down and then, you know, there's not much um, demand. Uh, and I think that's where, you know, it was, it was a collective decision with my team um, where we were like, you know, it's, this person needs to become a brand, you know, um, surviving on who they are um, and other things that they can offer. So it was a lot of um, diversifying revenue streams still through the same business. Yeah. So, I mean, to be fair, the last time I had a gig on stage live was probably end of April. Okay. Um, Which year? This year. Okay. So end of April this year, and now we're here. So it's, it has been a couple of months. Mm. But there have been other things that I've been doing, whether it's, you know, endorsements, uh, influencer programs, uh, MCing workshops, um, and just like kind of creating, mm. you know, my own kind of um, initiatives, you know, where I look for sponsorship and stuff. Mm. So how important is it? I mean, I like the fact that you talk about diversifying income mm. streams. How important is that? for any young person, not mm. just an artist, to diversify their income streams? Absolutely important. I think we're going into an age now where, um, you know, there, there, there aren't many ways to make money. And the ways that we've made money over the years traditionally have changed, you know, dramatically. Um, I'd like to touch on even like influencer, whoever thought that would actually be something that yeah. you put down as a way of making money, sure. crazy. Um, or even, you know, online promoting. But it's, it's really, really important because we live in a world where everything is always changing. Um, and um, there, like I'm saying, there are a shortage of jobs. There, there is a shortage of jobs. Um, it's very difficult to make money now. You know, right. according to what my mother says, it was far much easier way back then. You know, you could apply for a job and you'd get it. But I think it also just comes with trying to have more of an entrepreneurial mind yeah. Yeah. more than anything. So as much as you're a teacher, you know, find other things to do, you know, whether it's in the stationary space and you create like a digital app that allows kids to, you know, or yeah, but I think even with where the youth are right now, diversifying is almost second nature. People understand that, you know, Donna, you touch it and then you do this and yeah. then you, you know, you make things happen. So, mm. yeah. Apparently you are very principled. You, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> you were offered a lot of money without talking, you know, people's names. Apparently you were once offered a lot of money and you said no. Why? What happened there? Oh, that thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was scared of the tax man. Yeah. yeah. Um, in all honesty, it just, uh, I like to work for what I have. I like to account for what I have. 
Um, and look how that situation turned out. It didn't turn out really well. Mm. And um, I have a very good standing with uh, the tax guy. Mm. And I'd like to keep it that way. You know? So are you saying you refused that money because you didn't want the tax man to come to you? Or was it Two something things, much like, bigger than that? Yeah, absolutely. Like, no, well, that too. But um, I, I take joy in making my own money. Mm. You know, as a young woman in South Africa, uh, I think uh, we, 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 we don't get enough credit, you know, the hustlers, yeah. you know. And I think that's a new and really cool narrative that we need to draw towards young girls who are growing up. Mm. That um, there's nothing nicer than... Mm. It's not as easy to squander it because you've worked hard for it. Yeah. So I knew that if I got that money, I probably would have done some really silly things with it. So, mm. no, thank you. Uh, which takes me to my next question mm. about contracts, especially for artists. Yes. <laughs> How important is it uh, for an artist to be able to discern mm. whether this is a good deal or not and to actually do a thorough mm. investigation before they sign up? What do you think mm. needs to happen there? I think consulting has never been a bad thing. Um, I have been in situations where I've had, you know, a contract and I've gone to two different people. Um, but I will say that, you know, especially within the art sector, I think there are like four or five lawyers I know, like, rep like people, legal representatives who specialize in, you know, our, our field. Mm. Um, and maybe, you know, that's when now we need to create programs where we get more people in there, you know, in terms of legal. Um, but it's really, really important. It saved me from a lot of bad deals. Um, it saved me from being shortchanged in the past where, you know, somebody will come and offer you six rand, but you're actually worth 12, and then mm. you end up settling for 10. Mm. Um, so it's really, really good um, just to have, like, that kind of second um, kind of eye. And you'd also be surprised, John, at how many people offer you contracts that they downloaded on the internet, Goodness you know? Um, I've, I've actually come across quite a few of those. Huh. So it's always just good to have somebody in your corner, especially when you're an artist. I mean, this is your bread and butter. There's nothing else, you know, we don't have, it's very difficult for us to even get like insurance on a lot of things because of mm. what we do. Mm. So the least you could do is just make sure that you don't shortchange yourself in a situation like that. So consult. Mm. Mm. What is the worst financial decision you've ever made in your life? Worst financial decision I ever made in my life. Hmm. Hey. <laughs> Hey, I think adopting a firstborn without realizing I was adopting a firstborn. So okay. kind of like um, promising to, to like so look yeah, after somebody else. Adopting a firstborn? Without really having a firstborn. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so <laughs> and, and you know, um, a lot of people in business like kind of do this. And I think this is where, you know, you need to stick to the money and what makes sense for you. And sometimes, you know, it's not a business decision that's like, oh, you went and then you, you bought a car, you went and you bought a house or whatever else it is. Sometimes it's just, you know, incurring costs on the daily, you know, where now you're having more lunches than you need to be having. Oh, yeah. You're going to groove more than you should be going to groove. You know, your friend can't pay for their car, so now you're like assisting. And before you know it, it also goes into your, your own pocket it as a business and by the time you tally up everything you've spent thousands when you could have spent that money on doing something else so for me it's like very small scale that became big scale but mm. I realized at some point that listen like you know like you know and you know out of the good hearts I have I think it was easy for me to kind of get into that space okay mm. what is the one thing that people don't know about Gigi Lamaine one thing people don't know about Gigi Lamaine I love mm. to cook I love to cook. Uh, <laughs> I love to cook. Mm. I love to cook. I, I think that's do you, do like you the weirdest thing. Do you rap while you're cooking? I have. <laughs> do you I, rap while you're cooking? No, I don't rap. While I, but sometimes I go live, and I I'm a big experimenter. So the mm. people around me sometimes have had food that was like, mm -mm, you know. Mm. Uh, um, but yeah, I try. I really like cooking. Mm. I think people think because <clears> you're a hip hop and you're female, you're low key tomboy. But they like girly things. I also mm. like to do. Okay. So yeah. If there's one thing that you had to change about how you handle money, what would that be? One thing I would change when it comes to handling money. I wish I would pay more attention to the car, like the car, you know, and that's something I still need to learn about. Um, you know, swiping, you kind of pay for that and uh, transactions yes. and that a lot of people actually like lose a lot of money because of that, myself included. If I am <clears throat> banking with um, the pink bank, 
I will go and withdraw at a yellow ATM, not realizing yeah. that that's like a huge, mm. you know, cost in the long run. So I think for me, that's, yeah, that's something I probably still need to <laughs> work on and understand. Okay. Yeah. So how, how, does, how does budgeting work in your life? I mean, is there such, mm -hmm. I mean, look, you work in an industry where, you know, income is mm. inconsistent. I mean, it's not like you have a nine to five, mm. you're guaranteed an X amount. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you manage that, knowing that it's such an unpredictable um, True. sector? True. So I, I pay yeah. myself a salary. Mm. Um, my mom is very, like, within my uh, financials because she's, like, the only person I can trust. Mm. And then, of course, we've got our, you know, accounting people who help us with audits and stuff like that. But it all started with paying, like, myself a salary because when you see a large amount of money coming into your account, it's very easy to believe that, you, that it's yours. Mm. And in order for you to keep your business running and growing, you need to understand that you will need um, additional yeah. income. So, I mean, the new age artist would understand that there are things like boosting and mm. promoting your stuff on line um, even down to the nitty-gritty is like production costs you know mixing and mastering getting your stuff out there shooting music videos there is always like a constant um, <clears throat> thing so what I do is I obviously have my fixed costs um, which include my daughter my a time um, some of the people I pay in my team and then of course when you know some months are better than others then i will know that okay in april or in may i'm releasing an album i need to put aside five rand to make sure that i can promote and you know um incur other costs and the craziest thing with you know uh, especially uh, female artists is that your hair costs money hmm. makeup costs money um just how you look aesthetically costs money hmm. and that is in actual fact a business cost so you know even with that i i control the the hmm. amount of um how would I say, uh, the, the, the events mm. I go to, you know, so I won't just go to something that won't benefit me. I know mm. that, okay, I'm going to this <clears throat> makeup brand's launch. I need to look a certain way. I'm going there to network. And, you know, the end result I'm hoping is that I'm going to make a connection that will ultimately, you know, come and, you know, funnel into my business again. So I think I, I'm so stingy. Like, <laughs> budgeting. My mom, my mom always like, you know, she's like, yo, you... <clears throat> You're so stingy, you know, and she's likened me to a lot of things. Yeah. And I, I, I'm very grateful to her because I think it all started with her. You know, she had a salon. Um, there was a tavern at some point out in Orange Farm. There was a tax shop, Ispaza, where I used to work. Uh, and then I would, like, sell airtime, and then that's how I would kind of, like, get uh, my pocket money. So since way back, budgeting has always been something that <clears throat> has been there. I won't lie that sometimes I have defaulted, and I feel extremely bad for it. <laughs> I like something you said. I mean, for me, that's a sign of financial wisdom. You spoke about... Um, the amount of money you spend mm. on your image, mm. um, makeup, hair, and all that, that's actually a business expense. Mm. And you can actually use it to reduce your tax liability because, I mean, you're running a business. <laughs> that's brilliant. But where did you learn that? I consulted, you wow. see? So, you know, accountants and, uh, I mean, I've got a registered uh, company. It's an entertainment company. Hmm. Um, there are lots of other things we do, but just knowing that, okay, you are buying this two piece to come here and this is what you're doing i think um really assisted me a lot but it also helped me to be like <clears throat> just more disciplined and to pick out what i engage in and what you know where i don't need to be i remember in the first years of my career um the club was a thing you know the club was a thing and guys we've been seeing gong couples like <laughs> we've been seeing those gong couples and um I think just with, you know, slowing down and understanding that Amalanga, our funny days are not the same, especially when it comes to creatives. Yeah, then I'm able to really understand how my money huh. must move. It seems like your mother has been such a big influence uh, to you. You speak very highly of you. Yes. What money lessons have you learned from your mother? Well, it's crazy because she's actually a nursing sister by profession. Um, and she had this amazing boss who one day told her, you know what, like, there's this, so the, the, she, she kind of like had a side hustle where she would look after patients at home uh, with uh, different things, Alzheimer's, dementia, um, CP, different, you know, conditions. And it was a side hustle that was growing, but, you know, her, her boss at the time, a doctor, was, you know, kind of helping her get these patients slash clients in. And one day she just decided, well, not decided, he was like, you know what, I'd be very selfish to not let you do this. I think you need to quit your job hmm. and 
do this you know and i will support you until this day you know he's always supported us so i think the business thing has always been there like i'm saying we had salons we had taverns from way back my mom was one of those nursing sisters at baragwana selling tupperware you know right. so we knew that we can't touch the tupperware when it's there like don't use it bring the tupperware back home you can't lose it at school um and like she's just always taught us to be savvy whatever we buy whatever we sell whatever we go into uh, and I think it's helped quite a lot, huh. you know, being a nursing sister, she's able to care for people, but at the same time, she's able to make money from that. And I think that's the, the biggest lesson I've learned from her. Being an artist, I'm able to entertain and inform people, but at the same time, I'm making money and I'm loving what I do. So I think that's the biggest lesson I've learned from her, like do something that you love and make money out of it. Huh. Yeah. What is Jujula Main's financial vision? <gasps> Technology. <laughs> I want to be a technology preneur, if there's huh. such a thing. Huh. So um, I'm very focused now, and I'm hoping that maybe next time I see you, huh. uh, it'll all be in motion. But there's a very nice um, something that we are creating as young uh, people. There are three of us in, it's in our team, uh, and it's all to do with technology and commerce. Um, and yeah, I, I I'm very big with strides. Huh. You know, I, I really want the girl in the hood to know that, you know, this girl was like me. Uh, so that that's definitely going to be a stride for, for young African women. Yeah. And yeah, hopefully we're doing Forbes 30 under 30 next oh, year. <laughs> oh. So what are your short-term goals? Short-term goals, ah, short-term goals. I mean, I don't, I don't have a property yet to my name. Mm. I can say that on camera. I don't have a property to my name. Mm. So that is something that I am definitely working on. Mm. Uh, oh, another regret. I think I was too into like vehicles. I should have like really invested in trying to get a home. Mm. So that's where my headspace is at in terms of short-term. That's like a personal goal, obviously. Um, and just traveling more, mm. meeting up with uh, more business-minded creatives. Uh, I had a very interesting chat with Slicker. I don't know if you guys have had him on, but I think yeah. he's brilliant when mm. it comes to you know, business ideas and he's shared quite a lot for me. So short term, definitely that. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of see where everything else goes. I okay. look up to Mam uh, Basitana a lot, yeah. Kanye Lomo a lot. Uh, some amazing women who have made amazing strides and wow. yeah some of them came from entertainment so so you say you invested in cars <laughs> and not necessarily on property is, is that a regret yes, One of the that regrets is definitely a regret i was part of the uber craze you know got some money put that in and if anyone knows like the oh. hey, uber is not as lucrative as it was before because now everyone is getting into it oh. but just even like just buying a vehicle. I just huh. really wish I would have like huh. downsized and yeah, made more informed decisions. But I think with the hype and the pressure of being who you are and trying to keep up with standards, you find yourself kind of going, yeah. If you were to give young women mm. some sisterly advice mm. or some tips in jail mm. around money, mm. what would that be? There are no friends in business. Mm. There are no friends in business. Every single friend around me I have is better than me. Huh. Better than me financially, um, a little older than me, but uh, have gone through things that I don't necessarily need to go through. Huh. Um, I've discarded a lot of friends who are, you know, not ambitious, not aspiring to do such. You know, when you find that you're discussing people and not business ideas and not discussing how to change the world, then there's clearly a problem. Huh. So to every young girl listening, I think the biggest thing is like, always have friends that are better than you. I'm sorry if you're the friend mm. that's better than the other friend, but yeah. like I, I'm always proud to say that like my friends, I have somebody who, a friend of mine does catering for some of the biggest production companies in the country. Um, a friend of mine uh, founded a skincare company. A friend of mine founded a very brilliant IT company and they do a whole lot of other stuff, you know, and that pushes me, that mm. pushes me to do better. It's not competition, it's inspiration. And uh, I mean, now I find myself at video shoots hiring my friend to do the catering, you know? So just always have friends who are aspiring and dreaming bigger than you. Those are pearls of wisdom. I mean, why, why is, uh, you know, keeping the right friends so mm. important? I mean, the, the, your association, yeah. you know, how does that impact your financial journey? 
It helps you keep dreaming. I think uh, when, I, when, I had the, when I had the wrong friends, you know, you're spending on the wrong things. They're telling you about the nice weave that came in two weeks ago, the nice hair. Or oh, friend, did you see that shoe from this store? You know, and then you have friends who are saying, hey, have you looked into NFT? Have you look, looked into this and that? And mm. um, I just think that your mind is constantly working. You're constantly working to become a better version of yourself once you hang around with the right kinds of friends. So I, I was in both spaces, you know, where there were friends where it's like, oh, Chomi, did you see that wig? Oh, it costs this much. And then there's a friend who was saying, Chomi, like, invest. There's some shares there. Go find out what's going on. And automatically the conversations change. Um, your state of focus changes. Uh, money is not something that gratifies you instantly now. You're looking at the long term. Mm. So for me, yeah, friends are very important. Any wedding bells in the horizon? Any wedding bells? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> why, I wanna, why are you, you throwing your hands yeah, up in the John, air? You know what I want to do? I, wanna, I, wanna, I want to, and this is another thing I want young girls to challenge themselves to do. Like, I want to be able to make money, um, have a home for my children, um, make them comfortable, because you just never know what happens to your partner. Like, it's not even about your partner eloping or running away. It's more like, you know, there are other things, you know, death, universe uh, uh, universe whatever like mm. no I'm not attracting that or you know disability and I just want to be strong enough financially um, career wise as a human being before I allow somebody to come in you know I, the person is not supposed to come in to fill up my cup they're there to compliment me so I just want to be a strong enough person whether my partner is there or not there to be able to like get married and have children I, I want them to be able to, you know, it mustn't be, go ask your dad, no, no, or the child needs this, no. I want to be in a position where I can give the child that and, you know, he has his own experience with the child as well. Finally, mm. if your future self called you, would you take the call? Yes, ha! <laughs> <laughs> because she's going to be out somewhere, um, probably in Hong Kong, doing some like really cool deal. Mm. Um, in the digital space and, you know, changing the face of uh, entertainment as we know it. So, I mean, yeah, definitely. I, I, I wouldn't want to talk to myself in the past, <laughs> but the future me, absolutely. Why not? Why not the... the... Because, you know, when you grow, you, you, you start to, mm. yeah, direction, yeah. you know. Um, me, three years ago, mm -mm. Mm. I, wasn't, I wasn't the person I am now. I've, I've, I've really changed. For anyone who's known me personally, they know, like, yo, I, you've grown up. Yeah. <laughs> Slicker was saying, yo, you've grown up. And mm. that is such a, I, I, don't, I don't take offense to that. I mm. completely accept it. And um, yeah, every day we're constantly working. Okay. Mm. Gigi Lamain, I wish you all the best for your future. Thank you, John. All the best. Sure. <laughs>